It's been an overwhelming supportive effort on everybody's behalf, and, and for that, I mean, we really appreciate it. And that was the thing that really lured the Atlanta Braves to Jamestown in the community. It was the people, it was the ballpark, the overall support, the Boosters Club. I mean, we want our players to feel like this is their home. And when Paul Snyder, and I, our director of uh, scouting and player development, he and I came up here, uh, that was the feeling that we got when we came here. I mean, we, we, we knew that we were going to be sending them, and we, I'll, you'll hear me say our kids, because, I mean, they are like our kids, because we know them inside and out. We know what they do when they're not on the field. We know what they do when they're on the field. And, and we know that you guys are going to take care of them when they're on the field and off the field. And, and, and that was the thing that, that lured uh, us to Jamestown. Logistically, it works perfect for us and our flow of talent. Um, and and we're, we're proud to be here, and, and we're excited about uh, the start of the season. Um, you guys are going to get, uh, in our opinion, some very good players this year. And, 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 I, and I'll speak briefly about the players. You're going to see with the Atlanta Braves uh, a little different pattern than you've probably been accustomed to in the past. Um, the organization, uh, as you well know, uh, has been highly successful. Uh, I mean, we've got a core of tremendous talent. Uh, at the major league level, and we've got a tremendous amount of talent at the minor league level. What we do as an organization, and it's just our philosophy, doesn't make it right, doesn't make it wrong, but it's been highly successful for us, is to draft and develop young players, high school players. Uh, we're extremely competitive in the international market. Um, we sign them when they're young, 16, 17, 18 years old. Uh, not to say that we would not go out and sign a good college player, um, but where we pick in the draft, those players are usually gone because uh, it, it's, uh, it's a blessing and then it's a curse because if you're constantly winning, you never get those high picks, so you never get the high profile players. So you have to do a, a more thorough job of scouting players internationally and within the states. Uh, so we draft high school players. Uh, we have more minor league teams than anybody in baseball. The Mets, I think, are, are up there with us as far as number of affiliates. But we have a Gulf Coast League team, we have a team in the Appalachian League in Danville, and then obviously we've got a team in Jamestown, and then our other affiliates in Macon, uh, Myrtle Beach is a new facility for us, Greenville and Richmond being the AAA. But you're going to see younger players here, but the key to that is these younger players are probably going to have one, two, maybe even three years of experience under their belt. So you're not going to be getting, for the most part, a bunch of guys that have never put on a professional uniform. Some of them you will, uh, and, and obviously you'll know when they show up. They'll be the ones that are walking around looking at, what do I do now? Uh, <laughs> but through, because we do send young players to Macon, we'll send them there for a half of a season, and then if we feel like they're a little bit over their head, well, maybe we'll move them back to Jamestown, where they've already got some experience at a higher classification. So when they come down here, they'll be more competitive because they've already faced better pitching. So, um, or, or, you know, they, they've been trying to pitch against better, better hitters, so that they'll be more advanced from that standpoint. So the product that you get here is going to be highly competitive, and, and uh, the manager, Jim Saul, is a wonderful person. Uh, you'll find throughout the entire organization, and what our organization is built around, is uh, gentlemen who their goal is not themselves. It's an unselfish goal. From my standpoint, from John Scherholz's standpoint, our goal is to get these guys to the big leagues. That's the reason we wake up in the morning, is to teach them everything that we know. Uh, and you'll find with Jim Saul, uh, with Mark Ross, who's a pitching coach, uh, who was in Macon last year, he's scouting for us out in Arizona, and then he's going to join the club once we start the season. Uh, Manny Jimenez is a young man that we just hired, who was in the organization for eight years. Uh, he no longer uh, could play anymore, in our opinion, and, and, and he wanted to stay within the organization. Uh, and most of the people we have in this organization have been in this organization, so they know what we're talking about when we say an Atlanta Braves type player, a major league player. Uh, it's, it's, our, it's what our philosophy and what we're, we're made of. Uh, but Jim Saul is a tremendous individual, and, and everywhere we go, uh, if we move Jim out of there or, or move him to somewhere else, uh, Eugene, I think the only thing that they're going to miss about us right now is the fact that Jim Saul's not going to be back there because that town loved him. Uh, and you'll find that he'll do, he'll run through a brick wall for each and every one of you. If you need something from him, if you need a player to do autographs or 
or, or whatever. I mean, he, he will do whatever he can for this community to make sure this thing uh, works out well. So um, you got some guys. I'll talk just, to, just briefly about a few of the players that are going to be here. We've got a young catcher by the name of Bry Ewan, who was a fourth-round pick two years ago, has sustained some injuries in the past uh, that hindered his development. Uh, you know, he'll be in his third year in Jamestown. This will be his third year. Uh, you've got Escrubal or a Peza, and we'll have to get I'll have to come up here and tutor them how to say his name. He was a young Venezuelan player. We signed him when he was 16 years old. Um, got a cup of coffee in Eugene last year and did very well, and we felt like he needed to go out to a short season club and continue to play. And, and he will be a very good player on your team. Uh, he'll play third base. Uh, we've got some pitchers. Daniel Curtis, who was a high school sign. This will be his second year. Uh, he was an eighth-round pick last year who is an extended spring and has been lights out down there. Uh, we've got another young Dominican pitcher by the name of Ramon Colon who pitched in Danville last year, pitched a year in the Gulf Coast League. So that's what I was talking about. They've already pitched and they've already competed professionally. So um, it's going to be fun. So you, you'll get, I, I, I say veteran players, uh, but most of these guys you get, they might be 19 or 20 years old. Whereas I know in the past you've been accustomed to getting college players who were 21, 22, 23, but it was their first year. So it'll be an interesting mix to see uh, from y'all's perspective the difference in, in the, the philosophies of the organization. But, um, you know, we're proud of the Braves. I mean, the, the Braves, we, obviously, we've had a tremendous amount of success at the major league level. And the only reason that we've had that success is that we've had the talent in the minor league. And it comes from places like Jamestown. It comes from places like Macon. And this is where we, these kids, they start their careers. This is the turning point in their career. And the way you guys handle them and the way you guys support them will play a direct factor in how successful these guys are ultimately in the big league. So um, that's about it. I, I, I'd like to open up for questions. If anybody has questions to me or about our major league club, minor leagues, anything, we'd be more happy to answer. Greg Maddox them. has another outing like his last two. Will you send him to Jamestown for rehab? <laughs> 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 on, on, on the rehab side. No, he is the best pitcher in baseball. He's yeah, he's a rocket star. He'll figure it out. He'll oh, figure I, know. It out. I like your style, Dick. This is good. This is good. <laughs> Tell us about the, your whole uh, minor league operation. Triple A is what? Triple A is Richmond. Richmond. Yeah. Um, this year in Triple A, I mean, we've got a lot. Of, as far as our talent, our talent is spread out pretty good. We finally have gotten to the point where we're comfortable within the organization. I mean, I, I was telling them earlier, we have four starting pitchers on the Triple A staff that are 22 years or younger in Triple A. Uh, and, they're, and they're having a lot of success. You've got Micah Bowie, you've got Bruce Chin, who's rated the number one prospect in baseball, uh, Darren Ebert, who, uh, I hate to say this for the Cleveland people here, at spring training opened their eyes and struck out the first five guys that he faced at, at Major League Camp this year, uh, opened a lot of eyes and really turned his career around. Um, we've got another young man who's 20 years old by the name of Ruben Quevedo. Uh, we signed him when he was 16. He's pitched in winter ball and, and has really shot through our system and, and, and kind of an unknown because every year at spring training you always get a surprise. You don't know who it's going to be. Somebody's going to come in bigger. Somebody's going to come in stronger. And sometimes you get surprises in the other direction. Somebody comes in a lot worse than they were before. But this kid came in and uh, his fastball had gone from 87 miles an hour to 94 miles an hour. His curveball was better. His slider was better. His changeup was better. And he didn't give up an earned run. We put him on the AAA team just because of numbers, and he made the team. And we couldn't, we could, we sat in our meetings, and not one person could tell, tell me why he can't go to AAA. And now he's three and two in AAA, and he's the youngest player in the international league. So, um, a lot of talent there. Uh, Greenville is kind of, a, in the years past, has we've always had a lot of players that, that play there. This year, it's kind of, a, I guess you could say, more suspects than prospects. We got a lot of guys with talent, but. You know, they're, they're on the bubble in their career right now, you know, whether or not they're going to have success. I mean, they, they just got to go out and play. So, you know, not a lot of prospects there. Myrtle Beach uh, is loaded with prospects. I, I say Greenville's not. We just moved Jason Marquis up to Greenville, who is who's 20 years old. Uh, and uh, he's, gonna, he's got a chance to be a phenomenal talent, a guy that we view as a starter. Uh, Myrtle Beach is a new uh, affiliate. We were in Danville last year, uh, but they built us a brand new stadium in Myrtle Beach. It's a phenomenal place, uh, but we have a lot of talent there. We've got a young kid by the name of Luis Rivera, who's 19 years old, throws 98, 99 miles an hour. Um, we 
We've got a second baseman that hit 37 home runs there in, in the Sally League last year, and Marcus Giles, uh, Brian Giles, his brother. Um, and, you know, just a lot of young guys. I mean, there's a, we've got a 20-year-old third baseman, Michael Hessman, who was a 19th round pick, Ryan Lear, first baseman with a tremendous amount of power, who's 20 years old. So you'll see, I mean, you'll see our organization, all of our teams for the most part are always going to be younger than everybody else. Macon is a younger team. We've got a young man by the name of Ryan Langerhans, who is an outfielder who is struggling in Macon left right now. He was a second round pick who could very well come to Jamestown and hopefully get his feet back under him and, and, and get him to go. Um, so we've got obviously Jamestown, Danville, and the Appalachian League. Uh, we really use that for second year high school players, guys that, you know, because I mean, this, this league is a whole lot more competitive than the Appalachian League. You've got more advanced players. Uh, I mean, Danville obviously is a rookie league, and it's, and it's for guys that aren't more, you know, their skills aren't as accomplished. They've got the talent, but they just haven't learned how to play the game. Uh, and then obviously we've got the Gulf Coast League down at uh, Disney World. Some of you may or may not have been down there, uh, but a phenomenal you know, complex. I mean, probably the best in baseball. Uh, you know, I say that biasly, but it really is a phenomenal place for our kids to, to play in. Uh, we have operations. We just started an academy in Venezuela. Uh, we have uh, an academy and uh, the Dominican Summer League program. We have an academy in Mexico. Uh, working agreements with Australia, working agreements in Puerto Rico, working agreements in Venezuela for the Winter League. So, um, we have a lot of players. We've got more players than everybody else. It's a huge operation. We have more staff members than anybody else. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, sometimes our budget's bigger than everybody else. But um, you know, our, our thought and idea is to, to scout aggressively, sign the best players available, and uh, as, have as large a talent pool as you can, and then funnel it up through the system. And, and it's worked. I mean, obviously, you look at our major league club, and even through some of the trades that we've been able to make, the one for uh, Boone, where we traded away Robbie Bell, who was our number two prospect, and we've still got all these young guys that you know can replace his spot. So that's what it's all about: signing and, and developing the best talent. Uh, that's out there, and, and our scouts, you got to say hats off to them, they've done a tremendous job. Uh, and I was a scout, so I know, I mean, I, was, I, I did that portion of the job also. Uh, and they drive thousands of miles every year, uh, and they do it for the Atlanta Braves. They don't do it for themselves, they unselfishly do it for the Braves. And you'll find in this organization, uh, there's, there's not, a, you won't hear a lot of people talking about I and me, it's a we concept, and uh, they come from the top, from John Sherholtz and from Stan Caston, and that's the way we do it. If you don't want to do it that way, then you go work somebody somewhere else. But uh, everyone's proud of what we've been able to accomplish, and, and everyone works together. And you'll you'll see as our rovers come in here during the course of the year, uh, they're a lot of fun to be around. It's a pleasure to work with the guys that, that I work with. So, Derek, you, you mentioned the minor league pitching. You have talent on there. You guys seem to be able to develop and retain the best pitching for at least for the last ten years. Is there a key person in this, or is it just a uh, combined scout with the best? I I think it's. A combined, it, it, obviously, we're always aggressive with pitching. We I mean we always we we draft a lot of pitchers because there's so many factors that can go into it. injuries. Um, you know, it doesn't they don't pan out. Um, we get the talent, and the, the key is you have to be patient. Uh, you don't want to rush. Unfortunately, we're in that situation where you, you we don't we're not forced to rush guys to the major leagues, and and we'll you'll. It may be frustrating sometimes to people, but there are times where we've had pitchers, 18, 19 year old kids that are in the sixth inning of a ball game and they reach a 75 or an 80 pitch limit, they may be throwing a no hitter. And we'll pull them out of the ball game. Because, I mean, we look at it as their, their future is in the major league. And if we injure them, uh, even though he's throwing a no-hitter, if we injure them because we give him an extra 10 pitches or an extra 20 pitches, um, we're not going to do that. So, so we're very patient. We have strict pitch counts. We have an organizational philosophy about delivery, arm action. Uh, every pitcher that gets into the organization automatically throws a fastball, curveball, and changes. That's all they throw. If they had a split finger as a young kid, we take it away from them because we feel like it's a pitch that could injure them. Maybe later on in their life, if they're not getting people out, when they get more fully, fully developed, we'll give them a split finger or something. So, I mean, they, they got to have success at the major league level. 
but it's an organizational philosophy. It's a strict pitch count, a lot of patients, and we made the comment the other day, somebody asked us that very same question, and we said, if you lined up every one of our pitching coaches, you'd notice every one of them have gray hair, and they unselfishly teach them everything that they know. I mean, they, and, and most of them have pitched in the major league level or uh, have been in this organization for a long time, and they understand, you know, We've kept the philosophy the same. There hasn't been a drastic change. It's like this is what we do as an organization. And anytime you know you 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 have one idea here and you have one idea here, then you're going in the wrong direction. Everybody's pretty much down the middle, and we do the same thing year in and year out, and and it's worked, and we're not going to change it. And, and a lot of people, you know, they change their philosophies as they get new coordinators in or new farm directors in. Uh, we haven't done that. We pretty much think remain consistent uh, throughout the year. Especially with the pitching. How did Derek Landner get here today? I don't mean that by flight, today? but we're, we're, what's uh, your background? Uh, I played seven and a half years in the Royals organization as a minor league player, career minor league player. I was going to run for mayor in Memphis because I was there for three years. I was, I was a fan favorite every year. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm an honor or not, but every year I was like, well, is Derek coming back this year? Like, no, he's not coming back. Don't give up your date time, Chad. Yeah, that's how he's here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Um, so I, I don't know if I should be proud of the fact that I was fan favorite in Memphis for three years. But, uh, <laughs> Played in the Royals organization. Obviously, John Sherholtz was the general manager during the course of that time. Uh, when I knew that my career was going to be over, uh, I contacted the Atlanta Braves because I knew that they were over here. Um, and they felt like an opportunity would be available for me, and, and it was. Uh, they hired me as an area scout. They scouted uh, Alabama, Mississippi, and Louisiana. And the next year, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana, Arkansas, and Tennessee. And then I told my scouting director, I said, look, I said, if you give me the whole southeast, I'll be one of your cross checkers for you because I was just an area scout. Uh, and they gave me all this territory. The first year as a scout, I drove 70,000 miles. Uh, so anyway, I was you know, I was trying to sign the best talent. I mean, they gave me a stopwatch, gave me a radar gun, and said, go get them. I said, okay, I'll go get them. Uh, and that's what I did. I started driving around in circles. Didn't know anything about it. Uh, was fortunate enough to have gentlemen that had scouted me uh, as a player that took me under their wing and taught me everything that they knew, to which I will always be indebted to. Um, they made me national cross-checker uh, after three years as an area scout, which a cross-checker is a person that goes throughout the entire country and throughout the world and makes a final decision for the scouting director, who ultimately has the final decision. But uh, you line up the talent according to how you feel like it should go in the draft. I uh, did that for a year, then they brought me into the office uh, in the fourth year as baseball operations assistant, uh, held that job for four days, then they made me assistant director of scouting and player development for six months, and then I got the director of minor league operations uh, the following year, and I've been doing it for the last four years. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's been full circle. I mean, this is my 14th year in professional baseball as a player. I signed out of the University of Mississippi. Uh, I was a 19-year-old junior. Uh, and I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a short story, a brief story. Dean Taylor was the, who is now our assistant general manager, uh, Dean Taylor was negotiating my contract as a, minor, as a potential minor league player. Where I didn't have an agent, you know, if you read all these stories, I was going to go play, it didn't matter. Dean Taylor, who was the assistant general manager, he and I are going back and forth on the telephone. And I'm saying, I've got to have X amount of dollars. And, and he's saying, well, we keep going through the whole spiel as to why he can't give me X amount of dollars. So we finally meet midpoint. We're not talking about a lot of money here. Uh, so we finally meet midpoint. I've signed my contract. After the Braves signed me, Dean and I are sitting down one night and we're having a Coke somewhere in some restaurant. And he looked at me very seriously. He says, you know what? He said, we'd have probably given you more money. And I said, you know what? I said, I'd have signed for a lot less. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's how I became a Brave. That's uh, terrific. Well, Along those same paths, just again from Jamestown perspective, Frank Wren, now GM with the right. Baltimore Orioles, was I think a fan favorite here for a long period of time, and he ran that same sort of gauntlet to where he's got to. So, hang yeah. in there. Yeah, no, it yeah. is a, it's a one. This this game is. I think he was elected. Uh, it's right. <laughs> it is a wonderful game, as you all well know, and uh, it's been very good to me. Uh, and and uh, I sat down with my wife when I was finished playing, and I I, I told her just point blank. I said, you know, I can't. I can't even picture myself doing something else. I said, I've done this since I was seven years old. And uh, I'm fortunate 
to be able to wake up every morning and I tell everybody I sprint to work because it's an absolute pleasure to work for uh, what I consider obviously the best organization in baseball and, and to actually get to live out my dreams to the eyes of these young men, which is exactly what I do because I've been there, I know what they're going through, I know when they go in slumps how they feel, I know how they feel when they're on a hot streak, uh, and I know how they feel when they don't get promoted. Uh, and I also know how they feel when I have to sit across from the desk from them and tell them that I've got to give them their release, which is the bad part of the game. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tremendous organization and it's a, it's a great job. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you. You mentioned, Derek mentioned the fact that you know, the Atlanta Braves and I think conceitedly are the, the best major league operation going. And Jamestown can't help but smile and be proud of the fact of its relationship that we will have with the Atlanta Braves. And similarly, and very, is the fact that we are associated with, by far and away, the best minor league oper operation in, in the United States.